Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint some loose watercolour pink cosmos. These are great flowers for practising getting warmed up with the brush if you're about to start some watercolour painting session. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right then, we're going to use this tutorial as also just a really nice way of, of warming your hands, your brushes up. Um, sometimes when you start painting or you sit down to paint, you just feel a bit sort of a bit stiff and a bit unsure of sort of how to get going. And it's a great opportunity to use my beloved Bloom brush set of these three brushes, um, a filbert, this sort of flat but slightly curved um, brush shape and then these two one stroke flat head brushes. So um, I've woken up the pinks in my palette. We've got Permanent Rose, Opera Rose, Alizar and Crimson and then wake up the brush by just getting it nice and damp and we're just going to launch straight in. So getting a nice bit of colour Got some permanent rose on the brush and the beauty of this brush is you can either sort of paint it um, with the the brush angled flat to the page or you can actually paint it like with with a with it sort of angled the other way and you get need a little bit more water there you get a lovely petal shape and you can sort of twist the brush So I'm just sort of creating some petals around a central point there. So we'll do that again. So you can either sort of start from the outer edge of the petal, twist it down in, or you can sort of start from the bottom up and come out. But what's nice is you get a really sort of organic shape with the petals which is what we really like so we're just going to paint in various flowers like this and then we'll come in with some opera rose which was brilliant for my barbie pink tutorial last week I've got the brush angled sort of quite high to the page and I'm just sort of twisting it in, twisting it in, twisting it out, then the sh shorter ones down the front like that. And then let's do some Alizar and Crimson ones as well. I might just get a few light little ones in. That's the beauty of this brush is you can just get Get some little little flowers going as well as the big ones. And the reason I wanted to sort of focus on cosmos flowers is because I always find with the petals they're quite sort of changeable, long and languid in it, so it doesn't really matter if you're a bit wobbly with the brush at the beginning. Sort of be brave with it, you know, do things that are just a little bit out of your comfort zone, I think. Uh, right, we'll just get a few more in and then we'll be ready to do the next stage. I've mixed up or woken up more like uh, the sap green and the green gold in my palette and I've got my rigger brush here which is a size zero uh, rigger, long slender bristles and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by painting in some nice curved stems that don't necessarily lead to anywhere in particular but what's good about this as well is it is a really good exercise for just getting your control if any of us have wobbly hands in the morning or when we first start painting this is just really good 
So I'm just sort of curving everything in and around. Um, that's a nice start. And then both the colours will work really nicely. Just keep on sort of mixing between the two really. And now I'm going to start sort of using the rigger brush to paint in the amazing sort of cosmos leaves which are very spider-like. So you just paint one and then you can sort of go on from there. and just start to fill the page and uh, all of a sudden what started off as a nice little warm-up exercise might be turning into a nice little composition I'm now going to mix a little bit of Alizar and Crimson with some sap green, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that's a lot of sap greens, so the others are in crimson, all but disappeared, so we, you always need to just be careful with how much of the more dominant colour you put in. Trying to get a colour that is like a, a bud that's just opening, so that's pretty good, I'm pretty pleased with that, because in and amongst here I thought well, what might be nice is one extra little accent is just a few I'm going to put some that haven't yet got stems uh, actually I think that's yeah I think that's cool um, and yeah we're just going to add those as extra little bits so this piece is looking really nice. The next stage, I'm going to change my water over because I don't know about you, but mine's looking like that. So get a clean water jar. And now I'm going to focus on the centers of the flowers. So Cosmos, I mean, Cosmos come in all colors and, and types, but I'm going to do yellow centers for mine. So I've got cadmium yellow there, and I'm just going to take a size zero pointed round and I want to dab colour in the middle with a bit of a sort of texture to it. So yeah, dabbing it in rather than just painting a, a smooth sort of circly colour. And the good thing about cadmium yellow is it's quite an opaque watercolour. So you can see that it, it holds its own now we can't always see it with some of these, so I might just sort of place in a tiny little bit. Okay, that's looking nice, and then this colour is going to be useful once again. We're going to use it as a bit of a sort of shadowy tone. Uh, but oh, it's just a case of sort of ordering everything, waiting for everything to dry. But we can add maybe just a few little sepals. Need a bit more water on the brush there. I've been really enjoying um, sort of using new brushes and making new discoveries because for very long I was just a pointed round kind of a watercolour girl and uh, what's lovely about brushes like the rigger brush and these ones here is they just sort of achieve effects that you could get eventually with the pointed round brushes but they would take a bit longer and it's just 
the nicest thing with watercolor, the most successful watercolor is when you can achieve something in as few brush strokes as possible. I've just noticed that one as well. So just adding a few extra little sort of sepals really. And now I shall let it all dry and then we will add just a little bit of this shadow tone to the centers and we'll be good. So we've got this mixed up and I've got my size zero brush and I'm going to sort of dab a few dots around the under edges so the paint, it's nice. I sort of allowed it to dry just a little bit, that yellow, but it's still the tiniest bit damp. So it means that there'll be a little bit of a blend, but not too much. We have got uh, more detailed Cosmos tutorials in the Flowers and Foliage playlist, so if you've uh, had a go at this, you've warmed yourself up, then you might want to tackle that. And then I'm just going to add one or two extra little sepals in this shadowy shadowy colour. And there you go, a lovely loose watercolour cosmos piece, perfect for warming up your hands before you paint another more detailed piece. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course if you never want to miss another video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye!